guys knowing Coach Potter, this team I think will play a, a mid to low line. Uh, they will be tough to break down initially. At 4-4-2 going against Clemson's 4-3-3. We talked about Reed in the open. Muhammad say a, a unique attacker with his size and his ability there at the front as well. Yeah, and you're seeing the young Tristan Deloach get some time out there getting that start. Tigers win possession early. And ball goes out. That'll be a throw. Uriel Ferguson triggers it in. That's Gerard Lopez. We keep an eye on him, the senior from Spain. And a poor touch there. It goes wide of the line. Ball's out. Let's take a look at the Blue Hose head coach, Jonathan Potter. There he is. Season number seven. His team ranked fourth preseason, or voted fourth, should say, preseason. But looking likely to exceed that with their strong start. Yeah, absolutely. Second year in the conference, they win six games, but three of them were the most important. They won the Big South tournament, went to the national tournament in just his second year. You can tell he's put his imprint on this program. As we said, a very strong start so far. They've won three goals, won three matches rather by a single goal. They're three and zero in that spot. As we get a foul, and a Tigers able to get it. And here's a look at that foul. Yeah, just a little late on the challenge there. Easy call for the official. Yeah, Quok, this is a. a PC team that just transitioned, it seems like yesterday, from Division II to Division I in 2007. They were typically a top 20 Division II team. Really done a good job of making that transition. Some schools do it better than others. As you said, an appearance in the NCAA tournament. There's a ball in the box and sent away. Tigers continuing to put pressure on, and they'll take possession back. This is Chifamba finding Gomez. Well, that's one of the areas that Clemson is so dangerous in when they can overload the flanks and get some numerical advantage, some 2v1 situations out there. Famba plays it back. Tiger, some good ball movement. Looking to find Say in there, and it's deflected out. One thing that's so difficult, interesting to see how Presbyterian tries to attack is keeping possession against Clemson is just awfully tough. Well, the, the, the first step is you have to break that first line of pressure. They're so good initially with the counter press in the final third. If you can manage for those first two passes to retain possession, you'll be in business. Top of the box. Out wide, low cross, and the offside flag goes up as we introduce you to Mike Noonan, head coach of the Tigers. Year number 13, the reigning national champions. What a job he's done with this program. Oh, they've just gotten better and better, haven't they? Number one in the country for a reason. I'll tell you what, they've played some tough competition already. And they have looked impressive. I mean, on the attack, they've been very good. They've been rotating two goalkeepers in. Both have looked incredibly good. And they had big shoes to fill with George Marks going to the pro ranks after he got hot last year. Well, and that's last year they obviously, as you said, won the national championship. Where do you go from there? And they seem to have just reloaded. Oh, nice little turn there. 
Shot away and high and wide. I mean, they lost so many players last year. We're talking about six players taken in the MLS draft. And if you add in Quinn McNeil, who went later and is now with Charlotte FC. Says Iragi Kalala. As you said, some nifty work at the top of the box there, Kevin. Yeah, good little counter press by PC. You know, we initially thought they were going to be in a 4-4-2, but they're really playing a 3-5-2, leaving the two forwards up there. But you can see their wing backs have dropped back. They're almost defending with five flat back there. It's going to be tough for Clemson to get possession in wide areas and be dangerous. Ball poked away from Say. That's a tough mark for Che Katamayo. Taken away and a foul called. Brandon Parrish in the midfield. Does a nice job taking the ball and then drawing the contact here. Yeah, and this will be dangerous. Uh, not only is this maybe just inside shooting range, goalkeeper, as we've talked about in the past, is dealing with that sun setting in his eyes. Gomez will take it and that is what our goalkeeper's looking at. Not an easy sky to deal with this time of night. I think this is gonna be a serve. Ball in, deflected. Opportunity squandered there. Can they press on Stritter here? Sent away. Parrish finds his footing. Low sent away. And the Blue O's have it. Yeah, the ball just ricocheted out there. I don't think Tristan Deloach was quite ready for it, didn't expect it. Carson Griffith ended up corralling it for Presbyterian. And a miscommunication there as Jordan Johnson thought he was going to have a runner out wide, and he didn't. It was like good changing the point of the attack from Presbyterian there when they won possession. You could see they had a little bit of space in that wide area. This is Enrique Montana. Tigers will load up from the back. Try to get organized. Good touch there. Lundegaard sends it across. Ball's forward for Gomez. High. And that'll be a goal kick for Clemson. And good defending by Johnson there. Tigers again built something rather quickly. Yeah, quickly changing the point of attack. And you can see Gomez get out there into the flank early. Just need to have that back post run get on the end of that. You see Leo Stritter, freshman, 6'2", 180 from Eschborn, Germany. This will be Gomez, one of your captains. 5'9", Spaniard, a senior. Sends it in low and dealt away low. As a Cardinal. Center on a corner kick, you have to beat the first defender. Give your teammates a chance to get on the ball. Titus Sandy Jr., Elton Chafamba, played all the way across. Here's Adam Lundegaard. This is Sandy Jr. Taken away and an opportunity here for the Blue Hose. This is Lopez. And Nicholas Honer goes down and a foul. One more look at that. It looked like Chafamba there. As Honer turned. It's like he tried to sneak in there and steal one. Yeah, small, small collision, but PC was on the break. They had numbers. Come on, come on. 
That can easily be a yellow card in some of those situations where the official interprets it as snuffing out a counterattack. This is Honer. And missed everybody. It'll well, be a goal kick for the Tigers. I know Coach Potter will be disappointed. That was one of the things we talked about was making the most of their set pieces. You have to, you have to give your team a chance in those situations. You see there, big match coming up on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Wake Forest comes in here to Clemson. Much anticipated showdown between perhaps the top two teams in the ACC, perhaps the top two teams in the country. Oh, yeah, and we saw the, the one by Clemson there. I think when the rankings come out with a the loss, they'll, they'll obviously drop it. I imagine Wake Forest will be the new number one team in the land. Try to go near side and knocked wide. Nicely done there by Enrique Montana. Got a good angle on it, Kevin. Yeah, it looked like a defender get the last touch or did Stritter just get his fingertips on it? And you see Stritter just got enough. Yeah, I think he would have been okay, but not taking any chances. Another corner and a header wide. The time went over Say's head, found Sandy. Yeah, Sandy just trying to put that back across the face of the goal. So tough in a situation like that. You're backpedaling. He made good contact. It's just difficult to get any power on that. Look at the numbers. This Blue Hose team has only surrendered three goals in five matches. They've been incredibly stingy. Yeah, and they've been they've been in some close games too. They've grinded out the results. Bit of a pinball there, and it goes out to Presbyterian. Lopez is a big boy, isn't he? He is physically impressive. Oh, oh boy! Contact there, and that's dangerous. I think that's at least going to be a yellow there. That will be a yellow. Yep, a dangerous challenge that time by Chafamba. Let's take a look at this again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see he even tried to pull his boot out, though, at the, at the end. He realized Carson Griffith was coming in, pulled back, but... The boot's already high. This is Hunter again. He almost found a teammate, and bodies flying. That'll be out for a goal kick. Yeah, and that was better service that time, wasn't it? Sure was. Last one was a bit heavy. Tiger down. Let's check this out again. See what happened down here. Now Carson Griffith just involved in just a little, little incidental contact. Looks like the collision. That was Isaiah Reed. Down, looked like he got landed on by a teammate there. Hopefully he's okay. We discussed one of the Senior leaders on this team, one of the veterans, a captain. Somebody that, whether he's starting or he's coming off the bench, provides a lot of value to this Clemson team. And you just hope he's all right as he's going to limp off under his own power. Yeah, Take another look at this, see what happened there. Just a little, little Charlie horse, little dead leg there. And that's Muhammad Say. All six four of him land him right on the knee. I don't know if you could pick a worse teammate to land on you, could you? Exactly. <laughs> Reed getting another nice hand from the student section as he comes off. 
we'll see. Because he received medical attention, he will have to come off. Let's see what Clemson does if they elect to try to bring him back on here. I don't see a sub at the line, so I think they're just going to check him out and play, play short here for a minute. Yeah, they're going to see if he's going to go right back on. It was going to take a lot to get him off the pitch. We know this. Nifty move and then taken away. Good defending there by the Blue Hose a couple of times. Connor Hudson able to deal with the pressure put on by the Tigers. Shafamba. Ball ends up back on the right side. A little redirect Gomez. Parrish caught in the corner. And that'll be Clemson ball on a foul. I think that was... Is that Ferguson again on the tackle? I believe it was. They'll trigger it quickly. Flipped up for Parrish. Tigers able to win the ball in the air. Well done from Titus Sandy. Clemson again relentless. They're a team that almost seems to redouble their efforts when they're dispossessed of the ball. Now we have a nice little 1v1 duel developing here between Brandon Parrish and Uriel Ferguson here early. Montana to throw. And the Blue Hose not given a whole lot in the way of passing lanes. Montana one on two. That's Gomez nice plays shot. it back. That's very well done. Deloach gets it wide. Lundegaard, and now they'll play it from the back. Not only is Clemson so good at changing the point of attack, that's step one. Step two is getting players out there to support in those wide areas. They quickly have two and three players around the ball. Jafamba. That was nearly cut out. Opportunity here. Say, and it's cleared away. Presbyterian doing a good job sort of expanding. Closing it down when the ball gets in the middle. Not allowing Clemson a lot of free space to run wide, as you talked about, Kevin. Yeah, but that, it, you know, it appears they, they have five on the back line there, but they're also very compact centrally. Not allow a lot of entry passes into, say. This is Lopez. He turns and plays it to Ferguson. Ferguson back to Lopez. Space for Johnson to work. Jordan Johnson, ball in and sent away. Foot race won by the Tigers. Looking for some help, Isaiah Reed. That's clever from Gomez. Parrish. Opportunity! And offside, just a hair early there on the run by Say. A good idea from the Tigers off the wing. Yeah, I would say that was a, a fairly early cross from Brandon Parrish. He just turned the defense, and Mo was a half step offside. Good idea, though, from switching it up from driving to the inline and cutting it back. Just a different look. And you see Say, two goals, four assists. That's all Gomez, though, in that buildup, isn't it? Receives the ball in midfield, able to turn and play it out the other side. That's the experience factor. Talented player. He's been in a million of these situations. Reed unable to track it down, and Johnson will throw it in. Let's take a look at that offside. See the run by Say you're talking about. Yeah, good early ball. Foul called there against Kalala.
In the middle, nicely done. Parrish plays it back, but offside. And again, just a little bit off, but the creativity getting the ball in the middle and immediate redirection. Here's another look. Yeah, I just tried to one touch play. Brandon Parrish in behind. Well, Johnson was a bit of a straggler back there. He almost got inside of Johnson, and that would have been a dangerous opportunity. Yeah. Really disciplined from, from PC to play that high line and be able to hold it. That's twice in the span of two minutes they've caught Clemson off sides. Honer plays it to Ferguson. This is Griffith. Ferguson plays back. Now Carson Griffith, the UNC Charlotte transfer. Potter said he is a big part of their team. Just dictates the tempo of how they play. Good defending there as Paris tried to go forward. This is Nagy. Johnson out wide. And it is taken away. That's very well done defensively by the Tigers. Well done from Tristan Deloach there. Just got caught in possession, but he won it back. Redshirt freshman from Savannah, Georgia. Really an impressive specimen. There's a lot of good things for a young player. Ball sent in by Lundegaard. Here's Gomez. Well played. Got a little bit crossed up, did Parrish. We'll get it back to Gomez. Avoids the defender, but couldn't avoid him twice. And this will be a throw in for PC. Well, speaking with Coach Potter yesterday, that was one of the one of the players he highlighted for a PC to be successful is limit Gomez's time on the ball. So far, he's he's having a little bit of joy in midfield there. Presbyterian 5-0. There's the foul. Lopez draws the whistle. Yeah, this team 5 0 for the first time in their program's history, and really nothing cheap about it. And, and as we mentioned, they've, they've really had to grind out some of those results. And yeah, they're getting ready for Big South play to open on the weekend. Radford Highlanders. This is Lopez trying to start the attack in the air. It's a good chance ball. here. Good ball in and Dama able to pick it up. Is that Nicholas owner getting forward, making that run out of midfield. He's just got to pull the trigger a little sooner. But a nice ball in from Lopez just dinked it over the top. We're not guessing with the players we highlight in the open. There's a reason we talked about him extensively, and it's that opportunity not just to score goals, but to create. He created a nice opportunity here. Yeah, look at the weight of that pass. A little backspin. He's just got to take a touch and pull the trigger with the second touch. Pressure was coming quickly. I think that was Ben Erkins closing that space. Yeah, Erkins an energizer, Bunny. I don't think he's ever given up on a play. Well, and you talk about taking your chances. That's a little half chance. You've got to get a shot there. Test the goalkeeper. Ferguson wins the ball in the air for the moment. There's Say. Ooh. And a foul call. Nope, they're going to call Say. He gets the foul, and he took a nice blow, too.
Both those guys are down. Now say he's going to get up, but still down is Connor Hudson. Yeah, there was there was some contact initially, but I, I'm we'll have to do a, take a look. Nice little jersey pull there, wasn't it? Oof. Boy, that's rough. Hudson, you hope that Hudson just kind of got the wind knocked out of him there. He came full bore into Say, who we've discussed is a he is quite an impressive physical specimen, 6'4". Just a unique body type and skill set combination there in the front of the Clemson formation. Yeah, Hudson initiated the contact there. And it looks like he's come out the worst from it. We're just one second from the halfway point in the first half. I don't know if initially they called the foul on Chafamba for the high kick. Dangerous play, but I think it was for the jersey pool on Say. I think you're correct. Six fouls for PC so far, three for Clemson. Just three shots combined between the two teams. And hoping he'll be able to knock the cobwebs off a little bit. It's always nice to see him kind of get up on their own accord and make their way. And he'll come off for just a second. I imagine he'll go right back to midfield and report back in when the referee waves him on. Yeah, they're going to put him right back in, I think. Yep, they did not sub for him. So he will This is always when the, the ball's most, triggered in. This is always the most curious part for me. I never understood this. It's we know you can come back in, but I will exert my power and tell you when you should re-enter <laughs> the field. It's always so interesting. And usually it's right away, isn't it? But sometimes they make you wait just, That's a, right. just a little bit. Just so you know, you can't just do what you want. Right, you right. Know? I'm still running the show here. <laughs> Montana back to Sandy Jr. Perkins. Paris tried to turn it, and it's... Popped out of bounds. Vidar Ragnarsson, freshman of the week in the Big South. And a couple of substitutions here. Isaiah Reed going to have a seat. Isaiah Easley in for Clemson. Tim Strobeck also in to give Chafamba a break. There's Easley, a freshman from Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. Seventh time he's appeared off the bench for the Tigers this season. And then Strobeck, he is a firecracker now. Yeah, and you can see Alvaro Gomez over there again, just breaking it up. Look at what else going on in the ACC. How about Akron, the Zips? Getting two early goals off of Pittsburgh. Twice in the first 18. Wow, that's a, that's a big score early tonight on a Monday. ACC, not only a competitive league, but you know, you talk to coaches about the scheduling. You play twice in a week. Non-conference becomes a bit of a danger. There's a foul. We talked about Strobeck really trying to force the issue and a red card issued to Ragnarsson. Yeah, that's a very good pit team. One of the, what I would say is one of the favorites to win the ACC this year. Another look at the foul on Regnarsson. Yeah, I think that's more for the location of the field. Not really the severity, the foul, the intent. His first yellow card of the season. You would expect Gomez to just shape this in behind that back line. So good That's at these set pieces. Yeah, it just didn't curl enough, did it? He wants to pull that away from the goalkeeper. See what he had in mind. Here comes Lopez. And a foul. 
Veteran move there to slow up and draw contact with Lundegaard. Going to bring Czech Atamo in to take it. Johnson off of Erkins. Down the side, can Johnson track it down? He keeps it in, but can't keep possession. I was impressed he got the end of that. I thought. Thought it had more pace on it. Easily keeps it in and taken away. Boy, nice play there by Griffith. Blue Hose on the move. This is Lopez with the left. Ooh. Just wide. That's a nice little counterattack there. It's the Griffith to Lopez combination. Kevin, I'm not certain. It would have been close had he been able to sneak it in. And Dama gave it a good shot there. Try to block it, but this is oh so close. That's a nice little opportunity. I would say perhaps the best one of the game. Clemson hasn't had a really clear cut chance so far. They've had the majority of the possession, but if you cannot convert that into chances on goal, Foul. All for nothing. You wonder when Clemson is going to create that chance. You know, it's only a matter of time. As athletic and connected as this team is. And the timing's just been a little off on that front line. A couple of, a couple of offsides here and there. Another example there. Out and a throw in. But you know, sometimes that's to be expected when you when you lose a few players here and there, players out for injuries or various other things. It's hard to get into that rhythm. This is a very deep bench, though, for Clemson. You lose somebody like Usman Silla out tonight. And you've got guys that can go in. You've got Reed in the front and others. Reed, obviously, a starter caliber player, but when this team is at full strength, he's somebody bringing energy off the bench. Yep. Again, good defending. Sandy Jr., he's been tested. He's seen a lot of Lopez over there and has won his fair share of battles. Yeah, he's risen to the occasion, hasn't he? Indeed, he has. This is Honer in the middle. And, and PC is presenting a, a different challenge. You know, you see so many te teams that play some type of variation of a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, but a central primary striker. You know, this PC team. Oof. Say with a rocket. Good turn there. But this is a PC team that's playing with two center forwards. A little bit of a different look. Keeping Erkins in. Sandy keeping their hands full. One more look at this. Didn't take much for Say to turn. And that's what he does best, right? One, one second, his back's to goal with the defender on him, and then two touches later, it's coming off the keeper's hands. Quick on the turn, generate a lot of power in that shot. Ball in and deflected away again. Erkins all over the place. Sent out again. Another throw for Presbyterian as the Blue Hose maintained for a moment here in their attacking third. Looks like we're gearing up for some type of. Long throw here from Ferguson. They're loading up the box. And Dima's dealing with 
two PC players on him. Sophomore transfer from Loyola, Chicago, throws it in, and the shot is up and way high and wide. Lorenzo Nagy, 5'3", Hungarian, transfer from South Carolina. One more look at it, Ferguson, dangerous throw there. Yeah, looks like it comes off Lundegaard, but Nagy was just first to pounce on it. That's a good run. Opportunity here. This is easily. One on two, tried to split. Ferguson takes it away. The discipline defensively by Presbyterian there. Yeah, easily, I don't mind it though. You're getting that situation, you're in the area. Go ahead and go at the players may pay off, may draw a penalty. You want your attacking the players to gamble in those situations. Owner being flanked by Montana. And again, Erkins able to win a ball in the air. Good pressure from Mohamed Say, forcing the long ball. Ball on the ground. Parrish gets it back. Montana. Ball in and wide. Strobeck looking to make something happen. With a cross. And he just missed it. That he's upset with himself. He, he's capable of playing a better cross there. It's almost like it took a funny bounce there, doesn't it? Thirty-two minutes and change into the first half. Still no score. In fact, again, both these teams. Finding the attacking third, a bit of a puzzle. Three shots apiece. Tigers have put two on frame against Leo Stritter. Foul, and this will go to Presbyterian. Fifth foul, whistled against Clemson. That on Isaiah Easley, I think. Official thought he just undercut him a little bit, challenging for the header. Hudson going to send it forward. And a foul called Johnson. Too aggressive. Montana. Say, redirect, well done. That's a good tackle. Say, sends it wide. Sent in, wide, can they keep it in? Fine, say, nobody home to take the header. Nicely done, though. Quick change, changing the point of attack, getting out the other side, finding space for the serve. Strobeck. Parrish in and away. Here comes Lopez with it now. Tigers sprinting back defensively. And a foul whistled against Parrish. I'm actually surprised he's not going for the yellow card there. He's going to have a little talking to. Here's another look at it. Let's we'll see what you think, Kevin. As a contact, a little hold there, but then it's, it's that right there. It's just a, with the right hand, pulling to the jersey. Ref has a good angle on it. 
Presbyterian is on the counterattack. I think Clemson's fortunate in that situation. Ball in, Erkin sends it away. This is Nagy. Nice clever on the ball, isn't he? One on three. How about six, four, and five, three in a foot race right there? <laughs> Nagy and Say. Low and now, center of gravity on him, though, didn't That's he? right. Say was almost too tall to, to get in a, a shoulder challenge opportunity. It was cut underneath. It was an interesting visual. <laughs> Here's Sandy. Say gets it forward. Opportunity here and taken away. Boy, a heck of an effort that time by Hudson. Yeah, he did well there to hold his feet as long as he could. Easily got forward in a hurry there for the Tigers. Marco Garcia going to give Deloach a breather. Ben Kandu, Coastal Carolina transfer. And Nile in Guido. In Guidhole coming in for Nagy. Another corner for Clemson coming now. They're third of the half. Another look at that previous opportunity here. Yeah, good first touch there from, I think that was Isaiah Easley. Good discipline from the defender to hold his feet, not commit a foul. Alvaro Gomez. Low. This will be Blue Hose ball. Foul there. You know, Qualk, it, it hasn't been a dirty game, but the, the game hasn't been very fluid either. A lot of stops, a lot of fouls here. Well, here's an example. Yeah, that's a situation. He's getting called for dangerous play, but it could have easily gone the other way when Ferguson puts his head that low, but the advantage is going to go to the defending team in his area. Kind of a subjective call there. Chance here for the freshman. Balls forward, a stumble. Can the Tigers get one? Wide. So close there. Yeah, and you could see Strobeck Peeling away, staying in an onside position, just looking for looking for the keeper to commit to him for the little pass and the push in. He elects to take it himself, doesn't quite get his hips around it. You can see Strobeck's a little bit frustrated there, but you're talking about making decisions in a split second. Strobeck with another chance here. He's got it. Inside the box, finds a teammate, and it's out. Again, so close. We mentioned that Clemson's a bit of a ticking time bomb here. You know they're going to go off at some point. Two dangerous attacks with Strobeck and Easley up front. Here's another. Well, Easley's given him a spark, hasn't he? He's finding himself in dangerous positions. I got to tell you, I didn't see the last touch by Presbyterian there. I thought that was a goal kick. Turn and a wide shot there. Now, I've been impressed with Stritter. For a young player, he's very instinctive. He's, he's established a presence. He's, command, he's commanded his area back there. Tell you, Strobeck keeps finding himself in dangerous situations. Just, it just feels like a game where, where he could nick one. He and Easley have given Clemson a little spark here. Taken away from Ferguson Gomez. This is in Guidhole trying to track it down, and it'll be a throw in for Presbyterian. Montana tried to get him a cheapie. 
Let me go ahead and grab the ball. If he hasn't made up his mind yet, I'll put it back in play. Another sub, Kalala out. Luke Gladden into the lineup. Junior from Pittsburgh. 5'8 in the midfield. Ferguson gets it out to him and is played in and headed away. Oof. Foul, a very aggressive play there by Dylan Sullivan, senior in the midfield. Worth another look. A challenge for the ball, but you have to, you have to be aware of your surroundings and know if you're going to clatter into an opponent in that situation. I will say this, for these, for these second phase balls and all of these restarts and corner kicks, PC is very quick to get to that second ball. This is Honer. Ball in and popped up and snagged away. Oh my, and Dima's going early. Wow. All the way down and a chance here maybe. Johnson takes it away. Oh, there we go. And here's Strobeck. Oh, offside. Flag goes up. I think Strobeck knew he was in the danger zone and tried to scramble back there. You can see him rocking back and forth, and he'll be frustrated because he can see the he can see that back line. That's really the first time today you felt like Presbyterian was caught ball watching and caught napping a little bit. Well, they've, they've played such a disciplined high line. Plenty of time for either one of these teams to find one here. Out of bounds off Ferguson and quickly to send it in, but not really to anybody. Pass from Sullivan. Here's Kane Dew. Nice little deep there. Ferguson. This is Inguidhol. Sent away. That's fine defending again. Perkins back there. Perkins again. Strobeck tried to turn it towards Say. Instead, it'll be a throw in with 2.20 to play in the first half. Well, you can, you can feel Presbyterian's confidence growing in this game. You know, they're starting to get more numbers forward in the attack. Looking more dangerous in that middle third. The subs have given them a little, a little energy when they've come on. Throw back wide, goes low and scooped up. Shooter again. Oh, deflected off Ferguson there. I got a piece, helped his goalkeeper out there. And that will be a throw for Presbyterian. Ferguson will set it up. Probably the final possession for the Blue Hose here of this first half. See if they can make something of it. Yeah, quick to the second ball again. Montana gives it up. Oh, so, oh, able to get it out there, and now some opportunity. So cool, so good from Gomez there. Here's the freshman from Italy. Garcia plays it in the middle. Now Strobeck wide. 35 seconds to go in the half. Montana, shot, goal for the Tigers. Well, we talked about how good they are changing the point of attack. You can see when the ball gets played wide, they create an overlapping run, and that's where the cross comes from. 
Marco Garcia, his first career goal, gives Clemson the lead late in the first half. You knew as many bodies as the Tigers were able to get forward as quickly as they've been able to flip the field. Yeah, look. We're going to do it eventually. Gomez changing the point of attack. He gets the overlap run. One touch on the cross. Well taken. And I would say that's even a bit unfair to PC the way they've played so far. Garcia, a freshman, not gotten a whole lot of opportunities. He calmly dealt with that. Yeah, he did. He put that the only place he could. The far post was taken. He had to squeeze it into the near post. I'll tell you, that's, that's just Alvaro Gomez dictating, dictating where he wants the attack to come from. Really well done. Marco Garcia, just his second shot of his young career. And he's able to put the Tigers in front at halftime, 1-0 over Presbyterian. There's a look at historic Griggs Field. The lights in full effect here on a gorgeous night. Fans have come out today on a Monday night for non-conference showdown. The Presbyterian College Blue Hose, less than 100 miles up the road in Clinton, South Carolina, giving the top-ranked Tigers all they can handle here so far. And we're underway here in the second half. Yeah, well, interesting to see what type of changes each coach makes here. PC just chasing the game and they had a good first half. Let's speculate wildly here, Kevin. If you're the coach of Presbyterian, what sort of adjustments you want to see to give them maybe a little bit of an extra gear, an extra shot to finish some of these chances? Well, I think they've had a good tactical game plan, apart from the one breakaway from, from Easley and the goal there, obviously, at the end. They've had a good game plan. I think that you need to keep executing that. Keep this game close. They can go in the last 15 minutes. If this is a one goal game, they're going to be in good shape. Easier said than done. The Tigers put something together here. This is Parrish. Dangerous pursuit that time by Parrish. And on the flip side, it's a situation where Clemson really wants that second goal because the longer it stays 1-0, Presbyterian's confidence will grow into the game. Leo Stritter, two saves, did allow the one goal. As you said, really, it was unfortunate because there were so many other chances that maybe were a little bit better conceived that went begging. Tigers get the goal on a redirect. Yeah. Really nicely done from Marco Garcia. He put that ball the only place it could go. Clemson getting out wide. Fantastic 45 minutes from Montana. He plays it in. Gomez. Here's Say. Montana again. Back to Gomez. Some patience from Clemson on the attack this time. Lundegaard, beautiful, fine, say, into the middle. Deflected and a goal. How about that start to the second half for the Tigers? And it's Garcia again. 
What a lovely little turn from Mohamed Sayedo to set that up. But for me, it's all predicated by what Alvaro Gomez does. He's just pulling the string, spraying the ball around. Marco Garcia coming into tonight, just one shot in his career. He's got two goals. Look at this one. Yeah, reads it off the deflection, first to pounce on it. I thought Lundegaard was going to get this initially. Yeah, I think that it may have actually been trickling in. Fergus may, may have gotten to it. Garcia makes no mistake. Well, that is not an ideal start for PC there. How about two goals within four minutes of each other for the freshman from Italy? And now an opportunity here again. You know, you mentioned it, Kevin. The Blue Hose at times, it felt like, put Clemson a little bit on the defensive. Tigers have flipped the script out of the locker room. Well, I think that's what's so difficult about playing in this environment. If they can get a goal on you, it just ramps them up. It's like blood in the water. They're ready to feast. And if they'll go hunting for the third now. Gomez. Oh, opportunity, Parrish, wide to the right. Already three shots taken by Clemson in under four minutes. They had six the entire first half. I'm sure that was a message from Coach Noonan is go out and get the second goal. Second goal of the game is very important. There's Mike Noonan. Given more than one effective halftime talk, I would think, in his career. Say, into the middle, taken away. Clemson, though, still with possession, still dangerous. Montana. Erkins to Lundegaard. Finds the crease. Was that Strobeck on that? Almost. Almost turned the defender. Almost. When the guard able to play it. Say. Keeps his balance. Nice turn. Ball in. And I have to reset. Say into the middle. Shot goal with the left. And that's three. Hat trick for Marco Garcia. What a night for the freshman. He had played barely over a half in the first seven games of his career. And tonight, a 10-minute stretch to remember. How about this, Kevin? Watch Say work to set this thing up. Yeah, this is heavy on the cross. It's the second phase of this attack, though. Really terrific first touch there to settle it and prepare the ball and just whips it into the far corner with that left foot. Garcia's third goal. He got his first in the 45th, his second in the 48th, and his third in the 51st. So if I'm the Blue Hose, I'm going to double team him in the 54th. How many guys get their first career goal and say, eh, why not? Next seven minutes, I'm going to go ahead and make a hat trick. <laughs> 
I'm going to say one <laughs> at least. That guy right there. Well, we talked about how, how deep this bench for Clemson can be, right? You're, you're down a couple of guys. You bring Marco Garcia off the bench. Gets a couple of goals for you. And as you said, though, shark smelling blood in the water. Clemson not done. Well, and part of that, too, it may just be a Monday night here, but the, the crowd has filled out pretty good. And I always feel like this team feeds off the energy of the crowd and vice versa. Kalala whistled for the foul. Yeah, they're not going to let Garcia get free again. They've got him pretty well locked up over there. Thompson looking for other ways and a foul called against Atamo. Another look at it as Say takes a tumble. That's a little contact there. I don't know. Looked like it was shoulder to shoulder from this angle. It's obviously a dangerous area, but this is so tough. It's not tough to get it over the wall, but now to keep it under the crossbar when you're when you're that close. He's about 21 yards. Ooh. Gomez! What a save by Stritter. I think Gomez said, forget going over the wall. I'm just going to go around it. He almost bent that right back into the corner. Off the deflection, Strobeck made a run. Cleared away, but Clemson again can reorganize here. Ball through, and good instincts by Stritter to come and clear it. Again, promising Lundegaard. Say going to try to track it down and will. Gomez, a trigger man here. Sandy. It's it to Erkins and now Lundegaard. PC trying to ratchet up the pressure, but Clemson playing a bit of keep away right now. Yeah, just content to hold possession, pick and choose their moments to go forward. Foul whistled. Here comes Lopez. Had the one chance, really, midway through the first half. Created another, otherwise been fairly quiet. Popped up and Andema catches it out of the air. Well, we talked about the first half. It felt very choppy, a lot of restarts and whatnot, but second half is a lot more fluid. Keep waiting for our producer, Rick Bragby, to tell him in my ear we're going to take another Look at Stritter's save on that Gomez free kick, but we just haven't had the time, have we? <laughs> Sandy Jr. Johnson. It's nicely done from PC. This is Nagy. That's better. Far side Ferguson dispossessed. And now a foot race. Strobeck gets the angle. Nice sliding tackle. That's a good tackle there. Was that a Tamo? That was a Tamo. Here's Griffith across. Ball left for nobody. 
Looks like Lopez is maybe starting to cramp a little bit. Yeah, he's asking out. You can see him there on the left side of your screen trying to stretch the legs a little bit. He needs a blow. Lundegaard has it taken away. Kalala. Somehow, some way, and I know this as an athlete, you can see Lopez. As soon as they get the ball, that cramp will ease up a little bit. There you go. Gutting it out. Leading scorer, one of the leaders on this team, a senior. That's a good turn. Nice find wide, low in. Sent away. Parrish, really a good job. Slowing down the attack, but PC sticking with it. Nagy. What hustle there. Super play that time, Parrish. Just so quick. All right, let's go back, Kevin. You asked and you shall receive. Check out this save. Yeah, he's full extension on that, both hands. He knows he's not going to be able to hold that. He's just parrying that away, keeping it out of danger. What a hit from Gomez, though. Two subs in a game for Clemson. Dawson Malcolm, a freshman in Stater from Clover, South Carolina. There's Lopez coming off. Chase Kennedy, a freshman from North Charleston. Also went for the Tigers, Joey Skinner. He's got six starts under his belt, coming off the bench tonight. You see Mike Noonan doing some coaching to the defender, Montana. Enrique Montana put in a good shift out there, didn't he? Found himself getting forward a lot, swinging in those crosses. All right, the last three seasons, this is Clemson's first game coming off a loss this year, but in the 19, 20, and 21 years, that's what Clemson did following a loss. Pretty good track record there, Kevin. Well, what's lost there, Quok, is the 10 losses or 11 losses in three seasons alone. <laughs> he hasn't lost much, has he? No, he has but, not. But, but when he does, he has a tendency to bounce back. You know what's fascinating? You look at it, and I think I'm right in saying this off the top of my head. He has yet to lose an NCAA tournament game in regular time. He's gone to penalty kicks the last two years and then won the national championship this past season. So you can't even really say he lost the game in Those regulation and then goes into the opener next year coming off a legitimate loss. Yeah, in, in my book, those go down as ties and the other team advanced on penalties. That's right. You know, the old coaching adage, don't let a loss beat you twice at Clemson, they don't. The only team to beat Mike Noonan in the last three seasons. Coming off a loss was Pittsburgh last year. Lost a midweek to UNC Greensboro, I believe. Then followed it up with a loss to Pitt. And besides that, nothing but wins. And a, a very good UNC Greensboro team at that, a team that won the Southern Conference and went to the national tournament. Foul. They're going to get say. If you're just joining us, this game was really close about 15 minutes ago. It was tied about 15 minutes of game time ago. Yeah, right up to the 44th minute there. And quick second and third goal from Marco Garcia to get his hat trick. I mean, we'll have to do a deep dive, but I've got to think that hat trick was within seven minutes or so. Is that right, Quok? That's right. 45th, 48th, and 51st. Yeah, that's got to be somewhere near the top of the record books at Clemson for the fastest hat trick. 
Mohamed Say, nice ball, but sent away. Tomas White. Got a boot in. While we've got subs, let's take a look at all three of those goals from Garcia. Here's the first one right at the end of the first half on that redirect. Yeah, just pounces on it and smashes it in the near post. Second one off a redirect again. He just cleans up the deflection from Lundergaard. This one he earned. Yeah, and that one's nicely taken. Good preparation with the first touch. And he smashes it with his left. There's a look at Marco Garcia. First Clemson hat trick in two seasons. Kamarni Smith pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Kamarni was okay. Now he's <laughs> playing his trade with DC United. I tell you, Mohamed Say reminds me a lot of Kamarni Smith. That's a great comparison. In terms of physicality and build, but Kamarni had those long legs. It's going to be offsides there. Offside, just by a hair. Strobeck, little antsy, and you can see he's upset. You get a sense of how bad Strobeck wants a goal tonight? You can see it. There's a look at it, boy, just, I mean, barely an arm's length. Yeah, well taken on the goal there from him, though, if it would have counted. Again, though, PC playing that disciplined high line. They've called Clemson off here on a few occasions. Look at Strobeck. What hustle there. He made up a ton of ground. <laughs> Stritter coming way out of his penalty area to get on the end of that. Yeah, PC really only has gotten bit one time on that high line. Otherwise, they've been incredibly disciplined, as you said. That was a nice nutmeg by Lundegaard there. There's a foul from behind. White. Another look at this. Paris goes down. Pretty cut and dry. Yeah, just clipped him a little bit. Tigers will take a free kick from that spot right there. And fittingly, it'll be Paris taking it. Sophomore from Nashville. Well, that's a good one. Oof. And a little bit of a glancing blow that time. If that's a true header, that's dangerous. Yeah, that's, a, that's always a tough one. The ball is being shaped away from you towards the goal. Mostly, you're not going to get a lot of power on that, but just a little redirection. Stritter. Hoping to... Start a nice long blue hose possession. How about this score? <laughs> Akron Pitt all square at three apiece in the second half. Now Akron jumped out to that early lead, right? 2 0. Didn't last long. Here's Dawson Malcolm. We'll play it back. Can the Blue Hose push forward? Got a chance here. And Dama gets it away. How about this? Asking you shall receive, Kevin, the last freshman hat trick by Clemson Tiger. October 16th, 1996, Eric Quill did it against Erskine. Well, Eric, if you're out there watching, well done. And well done to Marco Garcia. 25 years and 11 months that stood as Adema plucks that one away. I'll tell you what I like in Dema. Youngster, Trevor Mannion, 
getting a lot of the weekend action. And Dama playing in these midweeks and has yet to surrender a goal. It just looks like a budding star, freshman Ghanaian goalkeeper. Yeah, these are always that's uh, what you want with your young players is game experience. He's done well in the moments he's been called on. You know, for so long at Clemson, it was pretty much this is George Mark's job. You know, it was Chima before that. They've had so many good goalkeepers here recently. Nice play out wide. And maybe a bit too nice. Offside, Offside whistled against Clemson. Skinner tried to find Garcia there. Again, PC executing that high back line well. Stritter. Tigers have been caught offside six times. I saw the stat up there. That's a pretty high number there, and you, to what extent do you give credit to PC and maybe you put a little blame on the Clemson side? Yeah, yeah. For me, when the center forward is offsides, I can uh, I can accept that a little bit more because there's so many moving parts checking your shoulder. You know, it's kind of the cardinal sin if you're playing in a wide area and you're as a forward can see the back line. There's almost no excuse in those moments to be offside. You just have to be a little bit more patient and disciplined, trying to get that extra step. And and they've had a few of those too. But so much of that is the the discipline and the training from that back line of when to step right before the ball is kicked. You know, There's a foul. As with always, there'll be lessons to, to learn and, and take into the next match. I'm sure Coach Noonan will, uh, will have a little film of that to show the boys on Tuesday. Into the middle, well done. Can Strobeck get his goal? That's gonna be a penalty. Yes, it is. I would imagine Strobeck <laughs> is going to run over and take that for himself and put it on the spot. He sure is. High and tight, young fella. Vidar Regnarsson, freshman of the week in the Big South, way too aggressive here. Yeah, just goes down early. Doesn't need to. He's late to the challenge. It's an easy decision for the referee. Now we talked about how badly Strobeck wanted the goal tonight. Swedish sophomore. Just wide. <laughs> Pushed it just wide there. You can see the frustration there on his face. Well, he had a little bit of space there if he could have squeezed it in. And Stringer went the right way, didn't he? Marco Garcia, Clemson's got three goals. He's got all of them. 45th, 48th, 51st minutes. Well done, young man. An outstanding run of play tonight for him. Strobeck still working hard in the front. Tigers able to get some reinforcements in, rest some guys. We talked about the big one versus two matchup with Wake Forest. You know, part of the, obviously you want to win tonight, but part of the goal for Mike Noonan, give some guys some rest, give some other guys some experience. Garcia, likely a beneficiary of that. Yeah. Well, that's what you always want to see from from players that are coming off the bench is to show that you are mentally and physically prepared in those moments. I tell you, I do feel for Strobeck not getting that goal. I always feel for players when they do so many things well that they don't end up on the score sheet. So you'd really like to see them rewarded with a goal there, not just for that moment, but all the work he's put in. Foul called against Clemson. There's a look at Garcia. Well, he won't forget this night. Tiger fans hoping there's a lot of nights like this in his future. Here's a foul. Yeah, just a love tap there from Skinner.
Nicely done there. Ball through. Opportunity. Shot deflected and saved. Tyler Trimnell, freshman from Lancaster, South Carolina. Try to go left foot. Yeah, he cut in at the last minute, just tried a little toe poke there. Couldn't quite get enough on it. Blue Hose able to win a ball in the air, but Tigers corral possession and likely could tend to hold it for a bit. I say that. Ball forward. This is Reed. Trying to play it in the middle and taken away. And Reed's going to get whistled for a foul. Saw Reed come up gimpy. That moved way through the first half. Came off, came back on. He doesn't, looks, doesn't like Mr. Beat since he's no. back on, does he? No, he looks pretty nimble right now. This is in Guid Hole. And that'll be it's like a goal kick for the Tigers. It, it tangled up with Titus Sandy there. Here's the foul. Little oh, he pulled. did get a foul. Rightfully so. Reed, nicely done to Strobeck. Can Strobeck get the elusive goal? Can oh. he help with one? High from Reed. Nicely cut back. You could tell he was looking across the field. He had two options. Do I go into Trimble at the back post or cut it back for Reed? He makes the right decision there. James Kelly in the game now for Clemson. 6-2 freshman forward from Gastonia, North Carolina. And Strobeck's going to come off, and you can see tired. Also a bit frustrated with himself. Had some chances. He would have liked to finish, but a really good effort. I tell you what, that's the kind of energizer, Bonnie, that you need if you're going to make a run. And how about this? Right in the side. Is that Tyler Trimnell? Trimno gets the goal. He found that left foot after all. Second career goal for the freshman, South Carolina native. Well taken, but a heck of a ball then to find him. We talked about the early cross when you can turn the defense in that moment. Just shaped right into him. One freshman to another. Look at Kelly. He's excited too. He knows he helped with that. Well, we were talking about Strobeck before that. He did so many things well in that first half. Even, even drawing the penalty with the last ball he cut back there for Isaiah Reed. I'm some relentless. Skinner gets it. It's a sloppy touch. David Citrone has it taken away and a foul. They had a play on, and Mike Noonan's upset. They obviously had a play on. Not sure about that, Kevin. Let's take another look. They were just tangled up a little bit. Looked like he was, he thought there was a foul on Parrish. He was going to play on advantage, see if he retained possession. He did not, so he's just going to bring it back. I think Coach Noon didn't think there was enough contact there to warn a foul. One more look. Let's see the initial. I think that's what they whistled back there at the line. Yeah, right when they scrapped for the ball at the beginning. Oh, nice job by Andama getting it forward for Reed. 
First man to it is Galloway. If you have that type of pace up top, why not? Now Ryan Galloway is checked in. Junior from Mesa, Arizona. Luke Gladden in the middle. Gets it back. Here's Galloway. Tomo gets it across to Galloway. Isaiah Reed almost cutting that out. Now a foul. Boy, it was close. Looked like he had a bit of a crease, too. Just over 15 minutes to play. William Quaggamush, Kevin Kennedy. Clemson three goals in the second half. The first. Mere moments from halftime. And the first three goals all coming from a freshman, Marco Garcia. Cross did not find the intended partner. Parrish. Galloway. And yeah, that was a slingshot there. <laughs> It'll be a free kick. Dylan Sullivan just Scrapping for it there. And have a seat. Now you could tell Galloway is just trying to let that ball run out of bounds. Shepherd it away, restoring the goal kick. Sullivan had other ideas. Good idea there by Hunter, but a bit too strong. Up the left. This is Reed. Deflected. Good scramble right there by Atamo to get back. See Reed queuing that up on his left foot. This is Paris with it now. Clemson again, not trying to force the issue at the moment. They'll take what's available. Well done. Deloach gets it forward and that'll be a corner kick. All right, before we get to this corner, here's how we got to 4 0. Let's start with Marco Garcia. Good place to start tonight. Yeah, Marco Garcia gets his first goal there. Oh, who's that, Quark? That's Marco Garcia. Marco Garcia. And there he is again. And Marco Garcia with his hat trick. And how about this one? Tyler Trimnell. Yeah, just lacing that in the near post for the fourth goal. There's a look at your scoring summary and some changes for Presbyterian. We have a new goalkeeper in. James D, another freshman. 5'11 from Gainesville, Georgia. Not too far from here. Shot high and wide.
for the season, Stritter has handled things almost the entire time. D's gotten about 31 minutes in goal. Yeah, I like the call there. Go ahead and get him some experience in a, a big game environment. And that's how young players grow. Pair of subs in now for the Blue Hose. Thomas White checks back in, and Alonzo Munoz, Northeastern transfer, also in. Griffith out, and Hunter also out. Well, it's always one of those moments, right? It's 10 minutes remaining. The game's 4-0, I think, for both of these teams. The, the match isn't over, but if Clemson manages it correctly, they'll see this out, and I think both teams will have an eye on, okay, we've got a bigger issue on the weekend. Presbyterian opening conference play with Radford, typically one of the better teams in the Big South. And then, of course, a really pivotal matchup, Clemson and Wake Forest doing battle here on Saturday night. They will start to give some players a rest. Unique aspect of college soccer, oftentimes playing two games within seven days. And that time off is so important for recovery. Ball across, well played. And the Tigers will get a throw in. That was dangerous. Oh, was that Trimble getting on the back of it there? I believe so. And Sandy. Yeah, he's just been lurking at that back post all night, hasn't he? Super job. And it'll be a goal kick. Here's another look at it. Again, Sandy Jr. Yeah, I think that's on frame if it doesn't take a deflection there. That's another thing. When you have talented players who can come in like this, this is not so-called garbage time or wasted minutes. You're putting guys in that are desperate to get a goal and have good touches, gain possession, defend, do some things to earn some minutes Friday, perhaps. Yeah, and you want to see your you want to see your substitutes when they come off the bench to to lift the energy level. They've certainly done that tonight. Reed. Here's Skinner. The leave on the side gets it back and it's taken away. I believe that was Ragnarsson. Got a foot to that. Yeah, Skinner's come in and he just started bombing down that left hand side. Gets the return here. Ragnarsson. Corner. What dangerous collision there and a foul whistled against Reed. Reed looking to get a goal in there. Maybe wanted it a bit too much. Hey, regardless, ah. regardless of how that looks, advantage is always going to go to the goalkeeper in that situation, right? You mentioned the physical nature of this game. 17 fouls apiece. It's been, it's been choppy, but I don't think it's been chippy, right? Yeah, I haven't felt like it's – you can get a sense when a game's like on the on the edge of getting out of control. It's just been a physical contest. Yeah, to that point, here's Nacho Gallego. Checks in for Ragnarsson. Ben Kane do. We saw him a bit in the first half. I was just having this conversation with someone the other day that you know, football is a more of a collision sport. Soccer is a contact sport, so there's always going to be an element of physicality about it. We've seen a couple of scary ones, but nothing, nothing really bad. 
Well, just two cards, one issued either side. So as you said, there have been some moments where there's been some contact, but not a lot of malicious play. And I think Mohamed Say was involved in both of them, right? One, yes. When, when, he, when he fell on his teammate Isaiah Reed, and they got tangled up with, uh, was that Connor Hudson in the first half? There's a look at Say. Say and a hat trick kid enjoying the closing minutes here. I wonder if they're talking about how Garcia now has more goals than Say in six minutes of his season. <laughs> I tell you what, say such a unique talent, the ability to distribute. They played him a little bit wider in the second half, and I think that really helped. He had a lot of good balls in with scoring chance. Well, that's one thing I think Mike Noon is so good is just the the adaptation component of these are the players available. This is what PC is offering. This is how counteract counteract it with these players, and and say in the Usman Silla chemistry that those two seem to have this year when they're both healthy and on the field is a really really dangerous piece for Clemson and even without Silla in the lineup tonight say still with two assists yeah and it's it's funny when you look at the two of those players a lot of those assists are Silla to say say to Silla back and forth team leading six assists for Mohamed say on the year It's important for Clemson to keep their focus here. Free kick in a dangerous area. You always want to preserve the shutout in a situation like this. Even if you could score two more goals, you would rather win 4-0 than 6-1. And Dama directing traffic, left foot against the wall. Citron. Ball goes back, and, and Dama is going to watch it sail over his head. Unless PC can scratch here, and Dama's going to get five starts and five, or excuse me, four starts and four clean sheets in his career. Four clean sheets, I think that's uh, not bad for anybody, much less if you're splitting time. Freshman goalkeeper from Accra. In Ghana, came to Clemson via Montverde Academy. Montverde has been so good to the Tigers. Mike Noonan's tenure, quite a pipeline. I've got a former Tiger down there and Mike Patempa running that program. Reed takes a tumble in the box. Couldn't get the call. Opportunity here. This is Kane Du. One on one. Has to play it back. Pretty good defending that time by Malcolm. Yeah, Malcolm was just delay, delay, delay until help comes. You know, back on the other end, it's a situation where there may have been contact, but I think when the game is 4 0 with three minutes left, I don't think Reed's getting that penalty call. Oh, nice ball forward. Could not quite find the right foot. Of the intended target, Gallego makes the run. It's just a fraction off sides there. The flag was going up. So before the offside, here's what happened to Isaiah Reed in the box. You make the call. I think there's contact, but referee, I think, can justify by saying his last touch was heavy. He's not going to get to the end of it anyway. There's other defenders. But again, is the is the call because the game's 4-0 and it's the 87th minute or or not? As you said, I think you could probably justify it either way. All right, we've shown you the goals. Now let's look at it from the perspective of the distributor. Mohamed Say with a couple assists. Yeah, it's nicely done. Two good assists on two of the three goals. I think that pushes him to six assists on the year. Easily leading this team in that component. 
Yeah, the rest of the team combined. This is a team that really does a good job of assisting on goals, but the rest of the team combined, I believe, has 14. He's got six by himself. And as you said, he's taken the lead from his teammate, who's Monsilla. Not in the lineup today. It is impressive the Tigers have not had his services, and particularly in the second half, they've been able to get offense a lot of different ways because Silla is such a catalyst. Skinner. So they, they are a different team when they have Gomez and Silla in that midfield triangle pulling strings. Speaking of Gomez. Yeah, it's one of, those, one of those thoughts that, you know, Gomez has had to do a little bit more work the last couple of games. I think it's been good for his game, stretch him in some ways where, where he hasn't been stretched before. PC looking to try to attack one more time. White gets it forward to Galloway on the wing. In the middle, shot, save. There's Endema off the right foot of Gladden. Yeah, came up with a good save there. Look at this, served him with pace. Terrific first touch. I think that was gonna dink off the post if Endema didn't get there. Jose Lotto in the lineup for Presbyterian, able to get that ball. 82nd minute in Pittsburgh, Akron in Pittsburgh, still all square, three apiece. And as we've talked about, no overtime this year in the regular season, so that looks like that could go to a draw at the end of the day. Tigers and the Demon Deacons, prime time matchup here at Historic Riggs Field this weekend. Tigers with a good tune-up. We'll wait to see what Wake Forest does. They play tomorrow, their midweek matchup. And the Blue Hose with conference play. I think we came away, Kevin, pretty impressed with Presbyterian, although they allowed some goals tonight. Yeah, absolutely. They, they presented some different problems for this Clemson team, but in the end, the difference was Marco Garcia, that guy right there with the hat trick. Garcia, three goals in six minutes. His first three and what Clemson fans and head coach Mike Noonan hope is a long and illustrious career. Tigers tack on another one later. Tyler Trimnell finds it back of the net. Four goals all by freshmen tonight. And on a team with a bunch of veteran established pieces, that is something that you know Mike Noonan is going to be proud of. Well, and the biggest thing was is to to shake off the weekend. I thought they played well against Syracuse, maybe a bit unlucky. I think Syracuse is a very good team with that set, but now they can put things right and head into the Wake Forest game with, a, with some confidence. 4-0 final, Clemson.